Hey everyone! So a couple of days something really cool happened which this video is going to be about but I just wanted to give you a bit of a premise so that you would know what this conversation, recorded conversation, is all about. Uh, so initially about a month ago I recorded a video called Pressure Testing the Two Minute Rule and the two minute rule itself is a commitment to do for at least two minutes every day something you wish to do more of. So that could be jogging, reading, and anything that you like. But uh, the genius of this method is, is that it's easy to commit to doing something for only two minutes, uh, but then if you feel like it, you continue to do it for longer, which often enough, on many days, it does happen. And so that's a great way to develop your habits. So I pressure tested this uh, method for 10 days, recording to see if it's gonna work out for me, and it worked really well. But the cool thing about that is that the video was watched by Kate Riggles, a woman from the state of Montana who decided to pressure test not only the two minute rule, but also the idea, uh, kind of a famous idea, that if you do something for 24 days in a row, that's gonna develop a new habit. And myself, I heard about this idea many times and I was always interested whether it's true or not. And not only that she started to pressure test that by doing the two minute rule for 20 day, four days in, uh, in a row, but also she was joined by a whole group of women who did that together alongside with her. They also share that in a group that I personally run for the two minute rule, which is called the two minute rule tribe. If you're interested to see, check it out. But the thing is I was, I had the chance and opportunity to watch that whole journey of theirs and it was super inspiring. There's so much I learned and I just couldn't stop myself from getting together with them and talking about it. The conversation ended up being really inspiring and we spoke about many things, including whether the 24 uh, day thing turned out to be true or not, and just about the whole situation in the world these days and how it's important to have other people around you doing something with you and committing to various processes. So obviously you're gonna learn all about that in the video, but I highly recommend listening to at least most of it because I think it's, it was an awesome conversation. So I hope you will enjoy it as much as I did and I let you go without further ado to the conversation itself. We are live. If you will say something terrible, like you will admit that you murdered someone or something, just let me know, I'll, I'll delete that in post-production. So. Oh, good. <laughs> Before I had this conversation with all of you, I, I, I was a bit anxious, I was a bit nervous because I was so looking forward to it. So, so this is very cool. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, so yeah, good to see you all here again. And uh, there's so much I want to ask and hear you say. Uh, but actually, uh, the very first thing I wanted to engage all of you with is to just ask what kind of two minute rule practice you did and we can go into the details of what it is and how it started and everything afterwards but maybe let's just start with who did what um so i did my two minutes of jogging i cannot stand running and now i can say that i like running <laughs> yeah. i was looking forward to uh, not every day i mean in the beginning i was like oh my gosh this sucks um and i found that it was really hard to find those two minutes even though it was pretty simple to do, but it's just as easy not to go do it. Um, but yeah, two minutes of jogging. It was, it was good. I chose to do the two minutes of running as well. And it started out rough. I did my two minutes. I, I kept it to a minimum for like the first week, week and a half. And then after that, I chose to start running for five minutes, 10 minutes, I ended this whole 24 day challenge on a 20 minute run and I went for two miles. So there was, I think two days in there where I really enjoyed the run. The other times it was just kind of normal, painful, trying to listen to my music and get through it type of a run. But um, yeah, there was two times in there where it was like a stress relief that happened with me and it felt really cool. Nothing I'd ever experienced before when I was running. So it's like Kate uh, told me one night, she's like, you know, I rolled out of bed. I was already in bed in my pajamas and I forgot to run that day. And she hauled herself out of bed to go run. And so after I heard that, I didn't really have any excuses. And so, yeah, I, I think I missed three <laughs> days in there, but I kept going. So uh, yeah, that was, that was mine. I did my running. 
I didn't run. I did abs and I do workout routine every day. Um, I do, you know, every running incorporates your core muscles, but I really put off, um, specifically doing ab workouts. Um, I just, it's like my most uncomfortable. So I thought it was like a perfect opportunity to pick, um, to do ab work. And so I, two minutes is okay. The first day, two minutes, the second day, my abs were really sore. So, um, every day that I did them, I felt like it was getting a little bit easier and, and I was getting a little bit stronger in my core. So I, it really benefited me. And, um, yesterday, my last day, I did like a 10 minute Peloton ab workout. And normally I'd be like dying and I felt like I, I made it through pretty good. So I missed day 23. I just had a, just like, I was like broken that day and had a long day at work and it was my Friday at work and I just kind of crashed. But I picked it up yesterday and, and finished strong in the end. And I think it was great. And I think I have um, other ideas of what I want to do uh, to incorporate this um, kind of a new challenge every 24 days, I guess. Um, and still keeping my ab workout in there and my workouts, keeping that strong. So it went well. I chose reading because initially before all of this went down, I was working out a lot <clears throat> at the gym and then roller derby. And it's something that I've wanted to do. Um, I used to read for fun and just kind of lost it with phones and all of that jazz. So um, there were some days that I was definitely challenged and didn't do it. And then there were some days that I was like completely intoxicated, but did it anyway. <laughs> uh, some of those videos I'm watching back, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. What was I making? Um, but, they were awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is just being able, I mean, besides adding great things, obviously is cool, but this has really saved me, like having other folks doing something that's similar to what you're doing. And, and it helped me be accountable because I didn't want to let my buds down, but then it's also neat to watch everyone's journey. And I was like, this is perfect for this time right now. Like, and I find myself reading without even thinking about it. Like, oh, I could be logging this time. I'm, I'm reading for fun. So I'm excited to add some things. I'm trying to figure out um, what to add next without, I have this sense of wanting to add a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. But that's probably not smart. So I don't know. I'm definitely going to add physical activity. I started it on the first. I did a little bit on the first and then just kind of, haven't done it since so I got to recommit write it down hmm. uh, so there's a question I want to ask everyone but just to double check about something before I do so uh, specifically April were you enthusiastic about reading before you started the two-minute rule thing or um, I think I was I, not necessarily enthusiastic but also not not looking it I guess reading is something that isn't like making yourself run. I mean, I didn't hate reading. So, um, I just wanted it to be more of a habit. So, um, I think I just didn't think of the opportunity to read as much. Mm, so right. it kind of helped build it in. Mm. Because something I uh, wanted to kind of point out and ask as well about is, uh, specifically that came out, uh, in regards to running. So Kate, Amanda, you both mentioned you hated running which I think is so awesome that you did that. And Heather, you mentioned you didn't like abs, ab workouts, abs workouts, I guess. <laughs> or you weren't like uh, a person who does it all the time. So I'm curious uh, how, I know already from us sharing uh, our journeys and our experiences that there were days where you enjoyed doing that. At least I know, specifically Amanda, you mentioned you did two, two days you actually loved it. And I think Kate, you, you had those moments too. So, so how was that experience of doing something you actually didn't like and then discovering that part of you starts to like that? I think for me, yeah, I hate running. I hated it and I don't anymore. And then, uh, and you guys definitely helped with that. Um, being able to, like April said, watch yourself back in those videos. Uh, that was kind of inspiring in itself, looking at myself and like <laughs> watching my journey. Um, <laughs> Cause that's something I've never done before. Uh, 
I'm not a huge video fan and this has made me become a little bit yeah. better about that. I uh, I, yeah, I, the first couple of jogs were super hard. Um, well, the first couple were, were okay because I was doing it with you guys and I was like, this is going to be fun. And then it kind of got, you know, after a while, it's like, I got to do this again. Um, and the running got a little bit, um, hard. I mean, it did. It just was like, this is another day of doing this. I have, you know, 20 more days. <laughs> And uh, I was kind of not looking forward to it a couple of days there. But then all of a sudden something weird happened and it just kicked into where it was like, gosh, this music that I'm listening to and the, the beat of my feet going running to it. And, and it just grew more and more. And I, every single time I was out there running, I was thinking of you guys, which made it even better. And I didn't run um, a long amount of time. I think the most I did was 10 minutes, nine minutes, something like that. 12 minutes, I think one day. So it wasn't, um, I didn't really go that long. I went the two minutes almost every single day, um, but I ran fast. It was almost like a sprint during the two minute time. And it just got more fun for me every single time. I, and I want to go run right now. I mean, I woke up going, okay, I got to get my run in. I'm ready to do it again every single day. Um, I'll come run with you anytime. <laughs> yay, Heather, you'd kick my ass. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I I mean it turned it into something more. So I'm hoping to be able to do distance a little bit more distance running um because of this even though I didn't go a real long long time. The times that I did go 9 minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, it was fabulous and I just wanted to keep going but I had to get home or you know, I had obligations that I had to do. So I wanted to keep going. It was great. Mm. Yeah, and for me, um I guess I didn't hate running. That's a, that's a strong word. I despised it because it was often, <laughs> I guess I'd get a side ache and then I would just start thinking about the other things that I had to do. And I couldn't get into like that mentality of wanting to be out there running. And like, I was, I was chasing that, um, that feeling that runners have where they're like, they're in a zone. They call it like the runner's high, I guess. And like they, they feel good while they're running. And I was like, well, maybe if I keep doing this, I'm going to experience that. So that's kind of what I was chasing. And uh, we likened it to jujitsu, where if you are practicing a move, a certain escape that requires a specific timing and what you're <laughs> giving you pressure wise like uh, one that I think about is uh, getting up at a cross sides bottom where they're making a transition and you sit up into them and it has to be just right and just perfect your timing has to be on and you hit that move one time during open mat and then you don't hit that move again for like 15 or 20 attempts but you keep going to open mat you keep trying and then pretty soon you hit it again and then it's you try 10 more times and then you hit it and then it's eight more times. And pretty soon you're pretty consistent with nailing that one escape in jujitsu. And I guess that's kind of what happened with me when I was out running where I enjoyed it that one time, I think it was like day 12, 13, somewhere in there. I had to be at this for like two weeks before I experienced that positive feeling from running. So, um, yeah, I experienced that one time and then I was like, yeah, I enjoy running. Finally, the next day it sucked again. And so I was like, okay, this sucks. So I, every day I put on my shoes, going out there running and it happened one other time. And even on my very last day running two miles, it was just like grit and determination and like feeling proud of myself that got me to run that two miles up and down hills and, and back into the woods. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I would, would liken it to. And I assume that if I keep running and I keep getting up and keeping this part of my routine that I'll start to enjoy it more and more, the more I condition my body to, to do so. There's a, I'll jump into a question in a moment, but there's something I wanted to share as well. And I think that's where I resonated with those stories because I did do a similar process right now. I wasn't working that much on jogging. I made that video. I did it for 10 days. Uh, but I also did a lot of the same type of running in the past. Uh, and I never consider myself a runner. Uh, I always enjoyed jog, uh, uh, sprinting. I enjoyed going really fast. 
but then as Kate mentioned, then you don't, you can't go for long. Uh, but then I kept kind of making myself do it and again and again, not for long, but just every day. And eventually I surprised myself to find enjoying it because I didn't expect that to happen. I just did it because I decided I will do it. Uh, but uh, also to, I think we discussed that in the group where uh, we, we sometimes have that idea that I'm not a runner or I'm not a person who reads books or I'm not this type of person. And we kind of box ourselves in and we never actually really go out of that box and try that thing long enough where we discover that actually I do love it or, or th there is a kind of a sense of joy in it. So, so kind of seeing that happen uh, in, in the group and in their process, that, that was very cool for me. So, so I appreciate that sharing. And uh, I wanted to also ask, so, so Heather, did you have something like that with your ab, abs workouts? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm pretty geared to like seeing and feeling results and driven like that way. Um, I, I don't want, I don't want to stop because I want to continue to feel results. And that's um, just like the bottom line for me. It's like, okay, I can do this. It's not really that hard. I know if I keep doing it, I'll just get easier and I'll see and feel results. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I guess, I guess something that you did mention uh, is that at the end you did that longer workout and you were surprised yourself that it was way easier than you expected. So I guess that that's kind of re a rewarding sense as well, I, I imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, most of the reasons why my, I mean, two minutes, three minutes, I would stick to, um, I do work out a long time. Usually like I'll ride my bike for 10 or 15 miles. I'll do a yoga class on top of that. So if I had more time just to do abs, I probably would, but I just added it, incorporated it into my other working mm. out. Oh, okay. Got it. Nice. Uh, you know, there's something you remind me of too. And uh, it's something I, I mainly experienced that in yoga to begin with uh, when I used to practice it all the time. Uh, but I think it applies to other fields as well is uh, that the muscles we don't like to stretch most or the, the exercises we don't like most are oftentimes the ones we actually need the most. Yep. Right, yep. So, <laughs> so I think it's such a good way to not do the ones where I like, I'm really good at this. It's so easy for me and that's what I do. But we're, on the other way, just like look at this, like I hate doing this. Probably that means I need this. And to do this, I think that's really cool and awesome. Yeah, I've learned that in yoga as well. Nice. And April, uh, something I wanted to ask you is, you mentioned, uh, if I caught that right, you don't like filming yourself. And Kate, I think oh, you I mentioned that it. too. Ugh. You hate it. So that's even better because you just, if somebody's watching this without being involved in the group or anything, I wanted to just say to everyone that you filmed yourself a lot. Like you you shared so many of your videos, which is really great. You shared some some great insights and some emotions, which were very touching. But it's so interesting to hear that you actually were not keen on doing that, but you did it anyway. So how was that process for you? I, I mean, I guess like when I'm thinking about it, that's actually something that was more of the challenge than the reading part, you know. <clears throat> um, but uh, watching your video and watching Kate's video meant something to me. So I was like, obviously, this is going to help someone else, too, you know. So it's less about how much I disliked it, but <laughs> more about maybe it's going to help someone else. So I, that's what I had to keep telling myself, like, okay, it, this is not for me. This is uncomfortable, but this is maybe going to make someone else feel something or be better or I don't know. But yeah, it was not, not my favorite thing. Did you feel like you started to ease into it by the end of the 24 days? Yeah, yeah that or um, it was just like, uh, it couldn't be worse than the other one I did or <laughs> they already know I'm weird. So this is fine. I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it's not as hard. It wasn't as hard towards the end for sure. It was more like, um, just doing it, I guess. I, and I didn't ever like start a recording and then like, Oh, delete that one. I mean, I just would go like if I said something dumb or mess up the, whatever just it's there i'll fix it in the typing part that's great i i really like that approach and sometimes i feel like people miss that it's kind of i don't know if you you, you guys heard about the 2080 rule 
like where 20% of your result, uh, your effort creates 80% of the result. And so many times people are the other way around. They want that perfection, which sometimes yeah. leads to doing nothing. So, so I, I like when you just do things and you put it out there and then you improve the next time versus just trying to nail it. Uh, but but I, something I wanted to say is uh, I really, you mentioned like you were putting it out and having that feeling that maybe this is going to help someone out. And uh, I, I can see even on myself, like watching your videos, I, they would touch me, they would inspire me. And, and uh, as everyone mentioned, like there's up and down days. Obviously that happens to me as well. And in my down days, I think that that's specifically that there was a day where you, where you got more emotional and you shared how, how much that practice uh, doing it with other people that meant a lot to you. And, and I think I had a down day at that moment and I watched that video of yours and I was like, oh, this is so good. Let's keep on doing this. So, and the funny thing is, you know, sometimes we don't share, uh, like, I, I don't remember if I specifically, I probably specifically did not say that. Uh, I, I don't remember how, what I commented that day, but that's the funny part is we keep putting ourselves out there and we, we don't get the feedback back that somebody got inspired. And sometimes we don't even know, but it works. It does. So I think it's really cool. And, and Kate, you, did you have the process you mentioned as well? Like video was not your thing, but, but you did a lot of video too. So how was it for you? Um, yeah, I don't articulate well and I have a kind of a stutter. Uh, I can get through it, but sometimes I don't find my words very well. So I just say whatever is in my head and it's ridiculous half the time. <laughs> but I usually... My motto is, as long as someone's laughing, and if that person's only me, then I don't even care. Um, so I kind of got that in my head. I'm like, I'm just going to video this and do it. And it was silly, but it was fun too. Like I said, going back and looking at the journey and, and all my videos um, made it even more fun with, for me and looking at everybody else's stuff. You know, when there was a hard day, looking at that video, I would go back and look at April's and Amanda's and I'm like, oh my gosh, and Heather's. Heather's were fantastic. She always had like <laughs> these glowing glasses and beyond and they were just, they were a lot of fun and I love, I love that. We had another girl that did it, Brokus, there's a, quite a few other ladies that did this with us and we had a private group. I think there was, how many of, eight of us, six of us? Um, there was probably about six that actually posted stuff, Leah, Kate, the other Kate, Kate, right? Katie, Katie, yeah, Katie Winget, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, and you know Katie Winget, she's at uh, Alberta SBG. Yeah. Steve, Katie, and Edmonton. So she was oh. running as well, and she did stairs and everything. And she just po she would post her entire two minutes. You wouldn't hear her say anything. She'd just start <laughs> jogging, and at the end she'd wave, and that was it. It was great. <laughs> My so favorite part. Were you guys just video watching the videos were really my favorite parts. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, um, I don't know what I disliked more like running or videoing myself. I have never <laughs> prior to this challenge, this 24 days, I had never held a phone up to like record myself speaking. And so it was weird. It was super strange, completely outside my comfort zone. But by the time I was finished, I didn't feel so weird and awkward holding my phone up to record myself but um i i only did a couple of videos for that reason is because i'm just a perfectionist and i need, need like everything to be in order and everything is correct and i'm not like kate where i can just kind of roll with the punches and and april who's just silly all the time and hit submit and it's like i i struggle with that so um I'm working on it and hopefully with my next challenge, I'll be a little bit more comfortable where I can, I don't know, film some of my archery shots for my, my next challenge. So that'll nice. be fun. Very cool. Uh, you mentioned uh, that there's more women that did this together. And that's one of the questions I wanted to ask is how did the whole thing start? Uh, I mean, how, how did it roll out? And, and also how did everyone feel when, so as far as I understand, Kate engaged that idea. So when, when you heard about the idea, what went through your mind? So, so kind of those two parts. So how did it start and what, what was your first impression? Well, you started it. So I, I looked at your entire video and your every day and when you got sick and, and didn't run, but you were still posting every day about that. 
Mm. And that's what I let the girls know in our, our, our thread. Hey, even if you don't do it, post about it. You have to post why you're not doing it. Um, because I think that's part of the pressure testing process mm. is that, I mean, it's kind of like when you're dieting and you have to write everything down and then you have to write those three Oreos that you ate. <laughs> that's the hardest part is that writing the, those Oreos down. You're like, I can just lie and not write it down. But who, I mean, you're only cheating yourself. So by not posting the days that you don't do it um, is a disservice to yourself, I think. So mm -hmm. I, and uh, yeah, you started it. So watching you doing it, I was so excited to do it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. I hope a bunch of people want to do it with me. And the, the girls that did it with me, are, they're so amazing. It made me so happy. I loved it. Mm. So how, how was it for everyone to, to be engaged with that idea? Did, did you jump in right away and you thought this is great or did you have some doubts? Was it easy to, to start the process? Well, at first, I, I think, um, I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm committing to here, but it sounds fun. So <laughs> let's go ahead and try it. And then uh, there was a kind of a thought in the back of my mind that was, well, I don't know if anybody's going to stick to this, you know, but it seems really cool. I watched your videos and... And I was like, what better time to start something like this than when I'm not going to work right now? I mean, I'm making online videos, but it takes me an hour and a half or so per week. And then I post my videos um, every day for all my fitness students. But I was like, what better time to start something like this to keep my mind busy? It's healthy. I'm a fitness coach. I need to stay in shape. And so I was like, I'll give it a try. I told my husband about it. He's like, yeah, cool that's cool. You know, thinking I'm <laughs> thinking I'm not going to stick to it, but I did. And yeah, it's, it's been quite a whirlwind of an experience and I'm really surprised and pleased that so many people stuck with it and posted about it. And it's very cool, very cool challenge. We just did. Anyone else? I jumped in right away just because I like challenges and I thought, well, this sounds pretty simple. Um, like everyone else here, I think the hardest part is the video part. And, um, just kind of being real because you're not always perfect. You can't, you know, when you get home from work or first thing in the morning is like, usually when I work out, I'm not made up. My hair is not done. Like, you know, I just like, okay, I'm just going to go with it. Um, you know, I know Kate and I know that she's a commitment type of person. So I'm like, I know she'll do it. I for sure, I'm going to do it regardless of how many people drop out. You know, it's just a good, I, I don't usually drop out of challenges and it was a good challenge uh, for myself with the video and, all that. I think I jumped on because I I was looking for something to do and watching Roka's video was like, oh, this is sweet and it shows like a progression. So if I'm if I'm doing it correctly and I do do some videos or journal about like the day or whatever, um, it would show me something about myself too. So I, that's kind of what I thought was cool is that. And then I wasn't alone. There was other people that were like, yes, I'm doing this. I'm like, okay, I got this. There's something too, uh, so, so Kate, you took, uh, you mentioned, you watched the video where I did the two minute uh, rule pressure test and I did it for 10 days, but then you kind of took it the next level further and you, you did it for the 24 days where uh, there's, it's probably uh, from something that I heard as well about that if you do it for 24 days that there's that theory idea that you will get into that new habit and it will become natural so so it was really so, cool it, it was that was that the uh, initial idea yeah. just to double check and yeah. so sorry did you want to ask add something else no you're good so uh so you pushed it to the next level you did that and now it's been it's today's day 25 right yeah. right and uh, how yeah. was that all experience of committing to 24 days and and do you feel like it worked do you feel like the pressure test worked and uh do you feel like that idea of doing it for that long did that develop into habit or was it more or less so so how was everyone's experience with that pressure test i i think it definitely um i do need that uh the I, the, she said, April said something about progression, you know, going through this and getting better and better and better at it. And that's something that didn't happen with me. Um, but I, I wanted to go run and that was the difference. It's, it wasn't about, um, getting better at the running and having to like, uh, 
succeed at this. Oh, I can run farther and faster and better and whatever. It was just me wanting to go do it. And that was a big, huge step for me. So, um, I think by doing this, I didn't, I, uh, by not getting 10 minutes every single day was definitely not a failure for me. It was more of the decision of, Oh goody, I get to go do this today. This is something I, I want to go do. Um, and the 24 days, uh, yeah, kind of made it a habit. I think 10 days, um, wasn't enough for me mm -hmm. because I don't think that I would have developed that love of wanting to get up and go do it and be accountable to you girls and you Rokas. And I just, uh, yeah, the 24 days definitely helped me make it become a habit and it makes me want to do the grouping, the other things that you talked about. I want to mm -hmm. go do a million more things. So I have to focus on it. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do two so I don't burn myself out. But, uh, yeah, I loved it. I, and the two minutes, 24 days, I think is something that is important. I'm glad that you uh, touched on this real quick because I, I thought about how 24 days seems like such a long ways away for me. And it was almost a mental block at some points where I felt so far away from the 24 days. But when I look back at the point at which I had an enjoyable experience with running, it was around that day 12 or 13 mark. And um, I don't know if I would have reached that level of enjoyment if I would have only done 10 days. Mm -hmm. So part of me in my mind is like, I want to keep the challenges at 10 days and see how, how it works out. But in the back of my mind, I know that we should do probably 15 at a minimum, but for me, especially to, um, to develop that habit. Cause 10 days is kind of like, a uh, it's over before I can really make it a habit type thing and then move on to the next thing. And then it kind of just seems like busy work for me. So, um, I think keeping the longer challenges, uh, I don't know if you're going to do 24 days with the next, uh, archery challenge with a couple, one other thing in there, but, um, yeah, I'm down for, I'm down for 15, 20, 24 days, whatever it is, and reporting with each other. But I do think going beyond 10 days is time for me. Well, I love Rokas is the pressure test and, and the reading part of like, or you give some advice and you tell them, hey, we should do this, but you've never done it yourself, even though it's like a good idea. And then you spread that message like, well, it exists for 24 days, it becomes a habit. How do you know that? I mean, have you tried that? So that really caught my attention and that's something I'm like, yes, I definitely want to do. And I read that, that somewhere that it was tw like all the time I see it, 24 days creates a habit, 24, and I've never, ever, ever pressure tested it. And it was, I mean, so I wanted to put that into the play of, of what Rokas was touching on with the, the two minute rule, because that was part of it. He's like, well, it's the two minute rule, but uh, we've never... I've never tried it, so I don't know if it's really real. It sounds right. It sounds good. Sounds right. So the 24th day thing and the archery challenge with Amanda, that's right up my alley. I do not shoot my bow enough. Okay. I go out there you know, and a couple of days here and there, and that's it. So the 24 days is going to be bad. So Heather, April, how was the uh, 24 days uh, for you? Like, do you feel like that developed into habit? Was that a successful amount of time? And so how was your experience? Um, yeah, I think that's a good amount of time for sure. And like everybody else said, 10 days, you know, it's easy to forget, forget about it, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like that time frame, at least, you know, like, you, like everyone else said, um, 15, 20, 25, 30. <laughs> I think that's the longer it definitely feels like more like you're building that habit. Yeah, I think I agree. If if it was only 10 days, that's, yeah, I think longer is better for any kind of habit that you're going to get into. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just on the record, I completely agree. To be honest, I did the 10 days because I wanted to make sure I make that video. And, you know, because otherwise it would take forever for me to do it. Maybe probably I should do more 24 days videos in the future. But I think I agree. I think 24 days is great. Uh, but something I wanted to ask, though, is so let's say 
the idea was to pressure test the idea of that, that famous quote, that 24 days, if you do something for 24 days, eventually it will become a habit. I was always curious about that idea as well. And part of me was a bit skeptical. Part of me was, was thinking, I guess it kind of makes sense. But now all uh, four of you did it. So let's say somebody comes to you and says, oh, you heard that 24 days, you developed that into habit. What's your, what is going to be your answer? So are you going to say like, yeah, I did it. It works. It's absolutely true. Or is it going to be more, well, I guess it works. I did it. But so what's, what would be your answer to the person after you pressure tested that? Well, it's up to you to just continue to do that habit. Like it's, it's not like just there, you still have to work at it and just keep going. So I think it just makes it easier for that to stick, but you have to make yourself continue to do that. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's the discipline part. I mean, yeah, I think it became a habit for me, but it can easily not be a habit again as well because the 24 days is over. It is discipline and and part motivation. I think the motivation is a very like 2% and discipline is 98% because without you ladies, not that you guys are 2%, you're totally 100%, but without you ladies, um, giving me that motivation, I might not have finished. I know I wouldn't have. So I needed that accountability, that motivation. Um, so somebody out there doing this by themselves, I definitely could do it if the discipline is there, but that motivation is just really sweet. Sorry, my dog is barking outside because I'm getting a delivery. So I muted my mic. Um, yeah, I, I think that the whole remind me of the question <laughs> uh the idea is that 24 days you do it and that develops into habit and yeah the, the whole uh, project was kind of pressure testing whether that idea is real or not so after really having done do you say that that idea is true or somewhere in the middle or no yeah so um if somebody were to walk up to me and say, does 24 days create a habit? Uh, how do I form a new habit? I want to, I want to make my bed every day. You know, I could give them the Jocko answer and be like, make your bed every day or eat healthy, right. or go running, you know, the obvious answer. But I think that in the long run, it's finding out what you're capable of really. Um, there are so many excuses out there and trust me, being a fitness coach, I've heard them all. I've heard everything from, I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I don't have the motivation. I don't have the good circle of friends, all of the things like, uh, it's raining outside today, the weather, the wind. Um, those are all real excuses that I've heard for people that can't come into the fitness class. And we give ourselves those excuses all the time of, I'm not feeling it today or I'm not motivated today or whatever your excuse might be. I mean, we're really good creatures at coming up with excuses when it comes to something difficult. Um, but this challenge, I think of pressure testing is really honestly finding out what you're capable of mm -hmm. and how it was raining or snowing that day, yet I still did it. And finding out how to not create those roadblocks and the excuses in your life um, is really what I found out. Like snow, rain, cold, 16 degrees, not feeling it, that kind of thing. I still went out and did it. So um, I don't know about creating a habit that just comes with uh, your mental toughness, but I think once you find out what you are capable of and how to get past those excuses, I think that you can make it a habit. I think, I think the 24 days, just if you can commit to doing something for 24 days, it, it helps remove those barriers. Like I can't, or I, all of the excuses because you're giving yourself a set amount of time and so for me and other challenges I've done, like um, at the gym, you know, transformation challenge was more showing myself I could be consistent with X amount of workouts a week and I could be consistent with what I'm putting in my body and I could be consistent in eating breakfast instead of skipping it. And so I think having that set time of committing to something helps remove barriers in your brain to commit to doing something good for yourself. So for me, I, th I think I would say, well, it worked for me, but at the same time, you know, maybe somebody else's time frame would be 40 days. They need to do something for 40 days to prove to themselves that they can do it. 
um, I think 24 days um, for that specific, you know, reading um, definitely helps me add it into my daily routine without thinking about it. Something more difficult like <clears throat> physical exercise or running or whoever did plank, I was like, holy cow, what? No. <laughs> um, I think it would take a longer period of time for me to have something like that built in. Um, a longer period of time to remove the barriers in my brain. So, um, interesting question. Uh, I have a half-ass idea myself, like a theory, why that happened. But uh, the question is, uh, because I'm really curious to hear everyone's opinion. So, your group that was formed together was women. I think there was no guy involved from your circle. Although I saw Kate uh, few t at least a few times mentioning, so guys joined this in as well. It wasn't like guys were excluded. So I'm very interested to hear, like, what do you think was the reason for that? Why do you think it was only women that made the pack and uh, guys didn't jump into, into it? I'm not sure. Uh, I think maybe if my husband started this with me, there would be men involved, but... I think that just, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I a male ego. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, this is the perfect time to say something mean about men. <laughs> no, I, I'm I not real sure. I had some guys, uh, two of them reach out to me, uh, message me and say, what are you doing? What's this all about? So I didn't, uh, you know, invite them and, and let them know what it was, but they didn't engage or they could have, they just haven't told me. So, uh, and I shared your link several times. I did too. I don't know. Um, I think women are just a little bit more into the, these these types of chat. I did lose my connection at a certain point. So um, I'm thinking, where was it? So some some guys reached out to you, Kate, uh, but you don't know if they engaged or not. I think you were, your last thought was maybe women are more into challenges like that. Uh, but I, I think, think so. Not. And it's a comfort thing, you know. They men and thinking maybe it's silly or whatever, or having another guy look at, I mean, like I did share your video um, several times in your link. I think just women are a little bit more interested in that and they're like, oh, whatever. But when uh, Amanda was saying that her husband, um, if you want to repeat what you said, Amanda, about the, your husband saying, engaging in the. Oh, the yeah, for sure. When, when I was, uh, when I first mentioned to Will, uh, what this whole challenge was and what I was doing. He was, he was like fletching arrows or doing something. I can't remember what he was doing, but he just kind of looked up and he was like, yeah, that's cool. You know, and he was, he was being supportive and everything, but it was like, yeah, that's, that's really cool that you found something to do. And he was super interested in what he was doing, but I don't think that he thought that I was serious about this challenge. Um, and he didn't think that this was something that we were actually going to do. And so I think now that we're finished, we've reached our 24 days and he sees that I've experienced a benefit from it. And now my next uh, challenge or activity that I'll be doing every day and will involve him because uh, we're both really into archery. Uh, he builds his own arrows. We do that together as a family, our kids shoot, everything like that. So I think that I'll be able to get my husband on board. Uh, Kate, you might be able to get Mike on board. Definitely. And We'll, we'll all be able to, we'll get a couple of men in the group. So I think that if, if we do something like archery or something that our husbands are interested in or willing mm -hmm. to do, uh, I think it's important we should talk to them and see if we can get them, get them uh, on board with us. I do know that I mentioned, my husband just gave me thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> I, I mentioned the archery. I was like, the next 24 we're going to do, we're going to shoot. And I think in between my shoots, I'm going to incorporate push-ups or something like that because I want to do grouping. So I do want to uh, do something else as well. I know that's going to be silly, but I need to do it. Um, and my husband was all about it. He's like, yeah, I'll do the archery shoot with you. I don't think he's going to do the grouping with me, but maybe. <laughs> uh, there, there's a couple of uh, thoughts running through my mind. And uh, very quickly, especially on the grouping and doing push-ups in between, you reminded me, actually, because when I read about grouping, I already – was invested in it because I did sim very similar practice in the past and it was very successful for me. So I just pressure tested it again to, to double check. But you reminded me that in the past, I, I, I like video games up to today, but obviously in my teens, I used to play much more. And when the games were loading and in the past, sometimes it would take forever, I would go and do push-ups, 
And that was actually a very good practice. I, I did a lot of push-ups like that. So instead of just sitting there looking at my screen, so I think that's a brilliant idea. May look strange to others, but I don't know if that's you know good enough reason not to do it. But uh, I, yeah, good. I have to mention that every single time I go to the bathroom and people are like, what? You do what? And they're grossed out by it. But every single time I go to the bathroom, except in a public, public bathroom, I do it at work and home. Um, I get down and do 10 push-ups and I do 10 squats and I, then I wash my hands. I know, I mean, you're going to wash your hands anyway. So after I do my duty, <laughs> I do 10 push-ups and then I wash my hands and, and during my washing my hands, I squat 10 times. So I, I wash my hands that entire time. I, and I've done this for 20 years. Wow. <laughs> that's, that a, that's a good pressure test. <laughs> It's so weird, but whatever. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. And also, too, uh, April shared that she was grouping uh, bathroom with um, reading. So, mm -hmm. so that's that seems like it's maybe just one of those things we don't talk about, but everybody does it. Not everybody, but <laughs> maybe it's more common than we think. So, uh, but Guys, April, I got to... Yeah, go ahead. Heather? Oh, I was going to say, I got to run soon. My house holds up and ready for... Uh-oh. A meal. <laughs> okay, so, do you need to? Uh, are you uh, ending your conversation right now, or I, in a couple minutes? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, let's see. Uh, I'll. So the rest. Do we still have a few more minutes afterwards? Yeah. Okay. So just Heather, before you leave, I'll ask this question yeah. uh, everyone else later. But uh, the final question would be. So I'd like to ask you now. Uh, what's next for you in terms of uh, the two-minute rule, 24 days? Uh, because you mentioned you, are, you already have, you're already sportive and you're doing things, uh, so it's not new, new for you. But what do you think? Are you still planning to do some type of two-minute rule or anything else? What's on your mind? Um, I'm going to continue to do the abs. I, I do actually have another goal. It's not fitness-related. Um, I'm just going to commit to doing the... Uh, studying for my test for my exam for, for my final exam till June so I have to, I want to commit to do that every day um, at least well I'll say two minutes but at least like 10 minutes a day mm, nice. Very yeah. Cool. yeah nice. will you please post about it still oh yeah yeah if you want Yay. me to of course I will yes <laughs> I can teach you some really interesting things about ears <laughs> nice well, yeah very yep. cool. Well, I'll, I'll keep on jumping to the next questions, but uh, how much more time do you have, Heather? Or you're, you're uh, about to uh, one more question, maybe. Okay, let's see <laughs> what's, what's on my list. Well, I guess uh, your opinion, while, you, while you're still here, your opinion on the guys thing. What do you think? Like, do you have an idea of why there were no more guys in, in your specific pack? Um... I don't know. I guess a lot of these things, uh, group, I, I mean, I have, I, I belong to like three different fitness, uh, groups. Um, I, the one I started was just for women. Um, the second one I believe is also women. So it didn't really surprise me. Um, I know it was open to all guys. Um, my husband never said anything about it. It's not his thing. Um, but I was kind of surprised that Mike didn't jump in because I thought he was going to. Kate said, mentioned that. Um, so I was kind of looking forward to a diverse group, but um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Are they intimidated? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I, I guess what was on my mind too is I, I was reflecting about that. And I think it's a big thing. I think it's just kind of that's the way it happened. And maybe because Kate was the one who initiated it. And then I think it's just natural that guys are more drawn into a pack of guys and vice versa and if there's like a I know in yoga because I used to teach yoga that would happen like if there was a woman instructor and there were like 12 women and a guy would come in he would want to do it but he would just feel like he's it, it would be hard for most guys because they would feel like they don't belong there and I guess it would happen the other way around like if there's like it's the that's even jiu-jitsu club 20 guys for one woman, I guess it's it's not easy until it becomes more and more, like it kind of equalizes. So I guess it's maybe that, but uh, Heather, you wanted to say something about that? or? Um, I, I don't know. I've never felt that out of place being with a bunch of guys, uh, one or two women. Um, 
I have seen what you were talking about in yoga classes. Uh, sometimes we'll have one guy, two guys, and then all of a sudden there's no man in the class. Um, I live with three men, so I'm not really uh, intimidated by the, the male factor. But um, yeah, it's interesting though. Because mm. he man woman haters. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, but uh, yeah, uh, I guess, but another thought I had is maybe, uh, maybe again, maybe I'm just putting too much focus on this, but I'm just interested to kind of reflect about it. And I thought maybe another one is vulnerability because guys, especially if we're talking about doing something you're not used to doing, I think uh, also to me speaking out as a guy, I think I got over that, but, but I still relate to that. Maybe for guys, it's more difficult to show themselves, basically like involves filming yourself and sharing when you're not very good at it yet, I, I would presume and imagine that guys are more like if I show something on video, it's, you know, I, I need to do it good. I, I don't want to show myself being half ass and not really doing it well. So I don't know if that's a thing or not. Because that's oh, I, definitely, a, sorry? I definitely think that's a thing. No, I'm, I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, I think that men sharing period is tough, except to your significant other probably. And I mean, you are vulnerable. I mean, putting your face on camera and saying, Hey, I feel this way about that. Guys just don't do that very often yeah. at all. So that, that right there would be, um, a commitment to them and a pressure testing process, just getting a video in their face and talking about their feelings about what they did. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. My husband is kind of the same way in the sense that, uh, he doesn't feel like he needs to post everything on Facebook. He makes, he doesn't have a Facebook actually. He's got an Instagram now. He deleted his Facebook, but uh, he doesn't feel the need to post everything that he does on Facebook in order to feel like he's accomplished something. Um, so I think that's where it comes in with my husband. What? Yeah. Do, okay, sorry. It's recorded calling. Oh, that's okay. Sorry, he, uh, he he doesn't the accountability factor of us posting and sharing every day about what it is that we've done um he feels like it's enough satisfaction for him to just do it and then know that he did it so um i think that 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 has something do you guys know what i'm saying it's kind of like a okay. yeah same with you Kate. i totally yeah i understand that and and i get that i i sometimes feel the same way. Hey, if you're going to do something, just do it. You don't need an audience. You don't need a pat on the back. You just go and do it. Right. Um, I also think that you sharing and Heather sharing and April sharing and Roke is sharing and, and um, just all of us sharing inspires somebody, whether it's one person out there to just like, Oh, two minutes. That's ridiculous. You know, I can do that. Um, and maybe realizing, wow, two minutes out of the day is really hard to figure out. I, I think that's important. Um, because I, I, I could get rid of my Facebook in a heartbeat. I can't, I could live off grid and not worry about it, but I also love the interaction with you ladies. You know, I could just do it on messenger and, and that would be completely fine with me if that private messenger. So I understand that completely, but I, I do also think that, um, if I didn't post this video, I wouldn't have this connection with you girls. So, and that's important to me, really important. Nice. Uh, before I head on to the next question, Heather, do you want us to just let you go or you want to stick around until the last moment you can or? Um, how, much, how much longer do you guys think you'll be going? I think if everyone is okay with that, 15 more minutes. Um, <laughs> it's fine, my husband left already, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh <Yeah>. my god <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay so i guess we we just continue um so the the next question i wanted to ask everyone is uh so what was the most difficult thing for you in the process so we, we're, we're talking about the importance of sharing that not not for ourselves also i guess the whole documenting does help uh but it, uh, we also kind of recognize that it's important to share, to share to others and to inspire others as much as ourselves. Uh, so in, tr in regards to other people and your next period of doing that again, uh, what, what's your advice for your next 24 days or for anyone who wants to start doing that as well? 
what did you learn like how to overcome the difficulties that came around okay <laughs> i guess you're the first <laughs> <laughs> sorry um uh, the difficulties was like um, making uh, a certain time to do it i think i talked about it in one of the videos like if i could just do this every day at this time um and then I wouldn't have to worry about it at night where I'm like, oh shit, I got to go run. I haven't ran yet. Um, that didn't work out for me. It was a lovely idea. <laughs> I just, because of this, I, I think the circumstances would have been different if the coronavirus thing didn't happen, right? All of our routines kind of <laughs> fell off. So I think that um, you're not going to the gym anymore and not doing certain things exactly at the same time really threw me for a loop. And that's probably why. I didn't have it as a routine. I think uh, normal work days, normal, normal time, I would have found that specific time to do it every single day. Um, so that was one of the challenges for me. But I did roll out of bed one night and go running because I had forgotten. Um, and I was sick for four days. I think I didn't run. And that was the challenge there was not being able to run and really wanting to and making myself rest that was hard and then i had some issues with my calves i still ran but i had to run flat-footed so i think that everybody's going to go through those like those little itty bitty tidbit things like oh my gosh my body's not used to this by day three you're like ow this sucks um and you have to push through those two minutes and i think that it's important to tell people that it's gonna hurt and it's gonna suck every now and then but just keep doing it your lotion is motion man I like that. The lotion is motion. <laughs> um, motion. Yeah, right? Motion, motion is lotion. Did I say that backwards? I don't know. Um, <laughs> what's most difficult um, for me was when I get into, I mean, you could call it a pity party. You can call it a woe is me moment, but I had one. And during this this uh coronavirus outbreak like kate mentioned it's i i got into like this state of anxiety and depression really where i can't go to the gym i i can't go teach my fitness classes i have to go online now which doesn't give me that gratification as a fitness coach to be able to um be there with them coaching them the hands-on experience that that I need in order to be a good coach. I didn't have that. So that was gone. I didn't have my jujitsu classes in Kalispell um, with all of my friends. And I'm an introvert, a really big introvert by nature. And I don't mind being alone, but when I'm socially isolated, it's, it's, it's sad for me. And I don't feel, if I don't feel connected to my people, then I just feel sad. And so um, I had a couple of days there where I basically had to pick myself up and just keep going. And that, Kate reached out to me too. So if I wasn't a part of this group, like Kate checked in on me, she sent me a message like, Hey, um, what's going on? You know, like, how's it going? Just checking in. And I was like, well, here's the thing, you know, and I, I told her I'm having a hard time. And, but you know what, I'm going to go run. And so after that, I was back on track, but I don't think that I would have continued if it weren't for the accountability. So, I mean, that's difficult to pick yourself up when you're down. And then advice, as far as advice for the, the next person is have a group, have a tribe. My tribe is strong. It's worldwide. Um, SBG, like once I joined SBG, I, I kind of left the group of people who weren't helping me get better and motivating me and inspiring me to be a better person every day. So um, having my tribe worldwide of SBG members and getting close to all you ladies, Heather, Kate, uh, April, Rokas, everybody that was in our group, um, you guys just kind of, we're, we were there. I was accountable. So have a, have a circle that you're accountable to and you can, you can get it done. Definitely. I think you guys said it all. It's basically, you have, you know, for someone that wanted to try this, definitely you need to at least have one buddy that's doing it with you um, to be accountable. And for some reason, for me, the bigger part was um, 
seeing everyone else. Like it wasn't as much about getting my stuff done. I was looking forward to also seeing everyone else's journey and um, knowing that we all struggle at different times, you know, like we're all human. We're going to have good days, <laughs> and bad days but um, if I wasn't doing this with other people, it would have been really easy just to like not do it. So. Heather. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, for that reason, I mean, I have, like I said before, I have a couple different fitness groups that I belong to. Um, and it's just, it's good to see everybody, um, everybody's input and successes and motivation and willingness to um, put themselves out there and be accountable. And, and then it does, it, it influences you and it, it um, creates more enthusiasm and uh, motivation to keep going. And I mean, not that you have to prove to anyone else, but it's kind of like just self-motivation and to see everybody else going. And I don't know, I think it just, we, it, feed every, it feeds off each other. You feed, you know, energies like that. I think it just, you put yourself in those circles or situations or in groups that everybody has this, this healthy energy out there. And we really need that right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, actually just remembered uh, something we discussed in, in the two minute rule club uh, that, well, obviously as, as you all mentioned, it's the special period in the world, quarantine and all that. Uh, do you feel like because of all the chaos that is going around, it's a commitment such as the two minute rule or, or anything similar that you did like that, did that help you specifically to kind of ease into the whole situation or, or it didn't? So what's, what's your experience? Do you feel like, basically just to clear up the question. So do you feel like a commitment like this helped you in this process or, or not? Um, I guess I'll answer first. <laughs> I think that this type of thing is, is so much needed right now, especially in this time we're in right now where everything's so um, negative and scary and, and just having a group of positive people and positive experiences and positive women and men and whoever else wants to join. Um, super important right now, especially right now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, these times are just kind of weird and, and nobody knows really what's going to happen or what's going on or, you know, how long this is going to last. And having this is unbelievably important to me. There was a couple of times where I got emotional. I'm probably going to get emotional right now. Yep. There it goes. <laughs> I needed this. So, and I thank you guys for doing it with me. Same Kate. I, now I get emotional cause you get emotional. And <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's, easy. It's, it's really easy to just disconnect when we are socially isolated and we have to quarantine and we can't go on walks with our neighbors or get together with our friends. And the hardest part for me is not being able to um, hug my mom and it hurts. And so to have a group of people that we can reach out to and share our positive experiences with is so, so, so important to surround it, like get rid of the negativity, surround yourself with positive people, positive news, like continue to improve yourself. And this, this has helped me and all of you guys so much to get through such a hard time. Cause for so many people, like depression is sinking in and it's deep and it is so hard to reach out sometimes. So, uh, I think that we should invite more people, like show them, Hey, this is what this has done for me don't seclude yourself in your, in your house. Like we have this beautiful program with zoom. I didn't even know it existed until today where we can <laughs> talk from opposite ends of the world. And it's, it's amazing. There's so much good in this world. People are good. You can see it all around you if you look for it. Yeah, this definitely uh, has kept me slightly sane for sure. There's been, I, <laughs> I always thought that I, I'm not social. I don't need all that stuff. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, when I can't go on a, you know, go to Derby and I can't see all these people and, um, you know, thinking about the patients I'm taking care of and why it's important for me to not give in to like my own selfishness of wanting to go see my friends and, uh, has definitely been, um, challenging. And so it, it has been nice to, 
be able to do this and connecting with people I wouldn't have connected with um, if it wasn't for this challenge. And I've had several people, like even family members message me and like, what are you doing again? And I shared Roka's video um, to several people. Again, like, I'm not sure if they decided to do it on their own without <clears throat> um, sharing or um, if they were just sort of curious, but not curious enough to take the bite. Um, but I did, I had lots of people like, what are you doing? What do you, why are you reading? What is this, you know? So um, it helped me connect to people, um, even though I was, I don't know, it's just something to look forward to, um, something that, you know, social in a different way, I guess. Mm, yeah. That, that kind of reminds me of there's a there's this theory called crossing the chasm, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, where there's initially people who are jumping into something they they are enthusiastic about, they like the idea and they jump on it right away. But that's the minority. The majority they need to see time time and time again. They need to other people to prove that it works, and and that's only when they join in. But so I kind of have that feeling that this may happen if we continue to do this and. And we commit to this process, how we inspired each other, as, and as, as some of you mentioned, even after this already happened for 24 days, there's a chance that even some guys will join in, <laughs> even your, your, your tight pack. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's awesome that it, it's happening. And, and I really appreciate all of you also sharing that, um, that from an emotional place. It's, it means a lot to me as well. I, uh, I know when we were, when I'm running, and I'm getting closer to my house to end it, it, it's overwhelming to me. It's just like, yay, I get to tell the girls I finished. <laughs> it's a pretty awesome feeling. That's very cool. There is a, you, we spoke about a little bit about tribe. And actually before, before I ask that specific question, I, I don't know everyone's background, so I wanted to double check it. Is everyone here doing jujitsu and is part of SBG or not everyone? Nope. So who's not? I yeah, SBG. Okay. Amanda and I are SBG. Um, and uh, April is roller derby. And I used to be <laughs> roller derby. <laughs> nice. uh, Heather, yeah. are, is Heather, are you training also jujitsu or I think I saw pictures of CrossFit. No, I'm not. I don't do CrossFit. I don't do jujitsu. Um, I, I do my own thing. <laughs> I mean, you're just a I'm tough huge. person. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, uh, I go to, cl I do classes in the morning before I go to work. Um, basically in the winter, I just do whatever to get me through to get into good, um, conditioning shape. Um, I run, I'm a runner. I was going to do Bloomsday. It just got postponed till September. Um, I do Spartan race every year. And uh, I just hike and climb all summer in the, She's a beast. my free time. That's beyond CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very cool. <laughs> um, well, that's, so that, that's even more cool because uh, I, was, I kept wondering and guessing whether we're all already part of you know, SBG. And, and that's kind of one of the uniting tissues. But it's, it's really cool for me to hear that you know, that's not the case. Um, but speaking of tribes, speaking of other people, something I wanted to ask about is, so, so there's two groups. There's your tight pack, which I'm actually very uh, excited and happy that, that you formed. And, uh, but also, as you know, and most of you are also part of the Two Minute Rule Club, which I started as a group inspired by actually you all coming together. Uh, but so I'm curious to ask, so what do you feel like, because it's, a, it's internet, it's a social media platform, but what do you feel helps in regards to that? Like what would be your advice in improving the group from your experience so far, both from being in your tight group and observing the, the bigger group? Like what do, you, what do you think should be done to keep this going and to make the group even better? Oh, pruning, pruning your group is hard. It is so hard. And I think that when we weed out the people who are negative or bringing us down or or uh, taking that leap is so hard but i think for me it kind of naturally happened when my husband and i and our two kids all joined jujitsu on the same day and then we just 
dove in head first. I didn't even know what martial arts was. And I've been at it <laughs> two and a half years now. And um, I think it just naturally happened where my lifestyle no longer fit with the people who were doing this in life. And we just kind of naturally drifted apart. So I got lucky in that sense that I didn't have to prune my group and cut out anybody who was bringing me down or anything like that. I don't really have anybody like that in my life. But if you do, um, I would highly suggest surrounding yourself, immersing yourself in a group of people that are so positive that you don't have time for that negativity anymore. And it just kind of drifts out of your life. Um, don't feed it. Don't feed the beast. Mm. What about in regards to specifically working and making that group even better? Do, do you have some observations like what, what helped you in uh, like looking at the, uh, the social media, like Facebook, your, your, your personal group where all of you are there with Kate and looking at the bigger two minute rule club, like what do you feel helped tighten that group or, or could be improved? Um, the video checking in, sharing our stories, being, uh, having, having an area where we are free to share our, the struggles and, and the hardships along with the beautiful accomplishments and all of that. So creating a, an atmosphere where people feel safe to share the hard and, and people are sharing the hard stuff because as we know, social media has always been such a highlight reel of all the good things. And so people feel if they come into the two minute rule club and all they see is positive, good things, they're going to look at their own life and go, well, I don't fit in here because I have hardships. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that the raw honesty, especially with, uh, with you Rokas, when you shared that, that first video of like, Hey, this is hard. You know, it's going to be hard and being honest about how difficult it's going to be, uh, that, that brings your, your tribe, your group of people together with more genuine folks that want to participate. Mm, that's really great advice. Thank you. I uh, agree. I think when people see, um, if they decide to, to dive in or commit or, or watch or whatever from the outside world or inside and realize that, that nobody's perfect and nobody's um you know everybody has bad days i think that it just the realness of it is what makes it more attractive mm -hmm. that makes it more um less intimidating i guess for people i would hope um encouraging participation from everybody in my little groups is kind of where i feel like it could bring more in i mean there's always bystanders always people that are watching you know with the watchers but not the participators but i think when you make it real and you add that realness effect to it um, that helps bring everybody closer, I think. Mm. Kate, are um, you up to the question? Like the active question? Um, I lost, um, my, my <laughs> phone died. So okay. I didn't hear You're the back. question, that, sorry. That's what matters. Uh, no worries, uh, the question is, that I wanted to ask is, we're speaking is. about the importance of tribe. And uh, my question was, there's two groups. There's the tight pack you have of, uh, of your, your private group. And also there's the two minute club, the open club. Uh, so from both experiences, what do you feel worked and what could be improved in terms of gathering a tribe, making it tight and maybe even growing it. And uh, I, yeah, right. I think the, um, the personal messenger tribe, our little tribe that we have uh, together, it was way more personal mm. and more committed the the two minute club i think could be that way but um it's not for whatever reason i'm not i don't know um maybe it's because people you know when they go in they're like oh yeah two minute club okay so you know i think there's a rule set that needs to be put on it maybe hey if you're going to join this club this is something you need to be dedicated to mm. um it, not just willy nilly. We really want to succeed at this. So you, you post every single day for 24 days. If you don't do it, um, you post anyway. And if you, you don't want to commit to that, I don't know. I don't want to say that you can't be a part of it cause that's ridiculous, but, um, I, cause people are just going to drop off and just disappear. We did have a couple of girls that were kind of like that, um, on our private group, uh, cause that's going to happen. But, 
I think um, reiterating the point that, hey, this is something that we want to hear from you. We want to see your face. We want to know what you're doing for two minutes every day. And how did it feel? You know, and if you didn't do it, how does that feel? Mm. Yeah. Actually, that- something while, while you were um, disconnected, I wanted to mention that uh, Amanda and Heather uh, spoke about something that really touched me as well was the, that it's important to share not only the positives, like not to go in and see that the group is all like, oh, everyone is doing it and everyone is having an easy time, but instead to share both sides, to, to, to have an honest group. I found it to be a really beautiful idea and it seems like you're speaking about something similar as well. So I, I enjoy oh, that. Mm, I like that a lot. Mm. I think sharing the, not, the days that you don't do it. Um, They're just as important. Group. Yeah, they're so important. It's like, oh, okay. So when I when I didn't succeed, it everybody else is on. It, it's the same for everybody else. We're not all superheroes, and we can't. I mean, it's two minutes a day, and I, you know what I mean. It's just that it helps you through it. That we're all going through the same thing. It, we all struggle. The struggles are so much more important than the victories. I think, mm-hmm. but. Mm-hmm. April, did you want to add something in? I just think for the for the the bigger group, I think the videos are important. Like, um, if I just saw screenshots of everybody's timer and like a, a little description of what they did, I don't think that um, it would motivate me as well as mm-hmm. seeing the videos and people share. I mean, that's just so much more personal. Um, so I think you know. I don't know how you get a larger group to be more intimate or be more successful, but um, having folks post videos is definitely, I think, a motivating factor. Hmm. That's also actually something uh, I wanted to ask from listening into the conversation, from listening to to what you said. uh, I'm contemplating this in the back of my mind, uh, whether it is a good idea. And I'm kind of leaning to that it is to actually set up that guideline that you do have to post your experience. You do have to share uh, that you're doing it. And uh, I guess on a rational level, it seems a bit dangerous because it can kind of kill off a lot of people who are (coughs) not capable of doing that. But at the same time, if they're not doing, then what's the point in being that group? Maybe it can be inspiring because you're looking at others and they're doing it and eventually join. But but I don't know. It's part of me feels like maybe that should be done. Maybe maybe that guideline should be there. Like when you commit, you commit, and maybe you don't have to commit on day one. But when you do, you do. So obviously, that's it. Sounds a bit dangerous because you feel like if we're gonna push people too far, then if right. it's gonna happen at all. But if we're not doing this seriously, then why are we doing this at all? So what what do you think? Do you think that would be a good idea to make that guideline? Yeah, I think. Um it's it's easy to not like if you join the the two minute rule club i don't know how many members are in there now is it a couple hundred no no it's only 65 but still it's, you know it's not 10 yeah so if you join if you join the the two minute rule club and you don't have like our little group of people that we already established it would be easy to just not post and have nobody notice you know so um how how you make that more intimate is uh I think creating what we created beforehand, getting with one or two other people. And then after you have your accountability with one or two other people, um, then post to that two minute rule club, share your struggles, share your accomplishments, things like that in order to help motivate people and then jump on there and, and get motivated yourself. So I think this, this little group of people that we had um, have here uh, is really important. I do want to say that, um, with so many people posting, you would, you could get lost in it to where it's just like, wow, I can't look at all these all day long. You know, there's no way. So there Mm -hmm. is that. So the club might just, you know, you, the guideline could be there, but, um, I think people could get lost in it as well because there's not that, that, that personal person for them. And that could be something, Hey, find somebody on here that you want to follow. It doesn't have to be 10 people. Find that one person and be accountable to each other. Um, and, and somebody you don't know 
and you can meet them and learn about them as well and their life. And I think that that's something that you could bring into it. Like, all right, team up with somebody on here. And I think that'd be yeah. really cool. I agree. So should I post that last video that I made in our chat? <laughs> Never posted yesterday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay, guys, I'm signing off. I, yep. um, I need to run. Bye, Heather. Well, thank you very Bye. much for, for joining us. Thank, thank you. Heather. See you soon. <laughs> um, so I am, I'll actually ask the last, the very last question since we are taking a bit longer than, than I uh, promised. Uh, but so the last official question that I wanted to ask is uh, what's next? Uh, what's the next plan? Mine's going to be the archery with um, Amanda uh, shooting my bow. Um, it's not something that is, uh, that I hate to do by any means, but it is challenging to do, especially, you know, when there's snow and, you know, your house isn't 20 yards. Just kidding. Uh, can't shoot indoors. Um, so that it is going to be a challenge to do, and I don't do it enough. I am going to be shooting at a live animal and I want to make a kill shot. I don't want to wound an animal and have to track it. And that is something that's extremely important to me. So practicing, something that is um, that important, I, I, want it, I want to dial it in and I want to dial it in real tight. Um, and also grouping, I want to do the grouping. So I'm going to be doing, you know, I'll probably have my husband, he's going to do it with me. So while he shoots, I do push-ups, and then we switch off and we usually shoot anywhere from four to eight arrows. So it might not be a two minute consistency thing, um, like I'm not doing push-ups for two minutes, but I'm grouping the two together, yeah. um, for at least two minutes. And it's probably going to end up being 20 to 30. <laughs> right. nice. Yeah. Same. Uh, next for me is going to be archery as well. I've been hunting ever since I was in eighth grade and every year, um, I've been a deer hunter ever since eighth grade. And there's only been like two years or so between that age and now where I haven't filled my tag. So uh, it is important to me as well. I just got into archery three years ago, three or four years ago. Um, and so it's important for the same reasons as Kate mentioned, um, wanting to be ethical and be confident in my shot. Um, if I want to take my bow out in the woods, I've rifle hunted my whole life and that's easy in comparison to archery. Um, so it, it's it's hard to get outside and shoot my bow, but once I'm out there, it's so therapeutic and so like you are focusing on every single thing that your body is doing in one moment, and it just it takes your mind off of what's happening in the world. And I think it's a really therapeutic thing to do. Definitely. So um, I'm not going to be grouping with mine. Uh, it's hard enough for me to commit to the one thing, so yeah. so I'll get out there and do that one thing. I'm going to get my husband on board to to do this as well. And probably my two kiddos. So, cause they're, they're shooting as well. So that's, that's my plan. Cool. I, I think my problem is, is I haven't, I haven't chosen anything yet. I'm having difficulty. Um, I, I thought physical activity, but I, I have to like pick a thing because if I, I then I, yeah. So I'm probably just going to do running. I, I did, some tracking in my car to figure out how far it'd be if I went this far. So I'm just going to commit to running about a mile every day. Just going to do it. Saying it right now, I'm going to run a mile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that said on the record, it's going to be online. On no way back. That's brave. <laughs> <laughs> I guess for, for me, it's just thinking out loud. Uh, why I love the two minute rule is because it's well, as Kate says, it's easy to do, it's easy not to do. Uh, and both are absolutely true, but but that easiness part where you think about it and you think, you know, it's even if I'm like tired, it's midnight just before bed, those two minutes, it's not as difficult to get in as skipping the gym. Like if it's like you, when you're thinking about the gym, it's like a one hour commitment, you have to go there and dress up and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then if you didn't do it, you didn't do it. Here you can easily kind of, clip it in so so when i look at my two minute rule practice i keep on thinking like whatever whatever my ambitions are kind of how to make sure that they're not out and beyond and in where i will kind of defeat myself already before i start 
so so yeah but personally I, I like that whole idea of keeping it small and then only expanding it if, if, if it feels like it so yeah one of those huge commitments is actually getting dressed to go do it <laughs> yeah Hey, did you yeah. say you ran one day without shoes on? Me? Yeah. No, I have. I ran with jeans on a couple of times because I was like, yeah. I can't commit myself to sweatpants <laughs> <laughs> and a Carhartt jacket. <laughs> uh, well, um, I finished my list of official questions, uh, but. Before we wrap everything up, is there anything else uh, anyone wants to bring up, like a subject or any last thoughts? I want to say thank you, Rokas. This is really cool. When I watched your your the the whole two minute pressure thing, I was like, God, that is so rad! I can't, I couldn't wait to do it, and mm -hmm. I was expecting to do it by myself. So I thank you, ladies, for joining me on this adventure. It was really cool and. I kind of want to do it for a, a year <laughs> nice. and I hope you guys want to join me on that. I know that's like a long stretch. That's a huge commitment to me, but I, I, I really do. I want to do this something every single day to better myself because it's fucking two minutes. That's it. Yeah. You know? I was on the phone with my mom uh, this morning and I had, I had, was talking to her about this and how I've got a little zoom meeting today and, and I was like, yeah, my, uh, Kate, Kate Riggles, she came up with it. Uh, she got it. She didn't come up with it. Rokas did. And somebody else invented the two minute rule. And I'm like telling her about all these things. And, and so I was like, okay, let me start over. And so I told her where this whole thing originated from. And I gave her the backstory. And as, as I introduced, yeah, Kate. And then I told her, I was like, which we become pretty good friends throughout this. And I was like, wow. I just heard that, heard myself say that, and I was like, how cool that we're here making friends, becoming closer, even though we're so far apart. It's right? such a cool feeling and a cool thing. So thank you, Rokas, for recording yourself and taking that video that day, and then Kate for spreading it and getting us all here. Uh, April, for your videos, they are so cool. Just to <laughs> so good. It, doing your videos like you inspire me like you seriously do so it helps to watch that video even though i'm not doing it myself yet but uh thank you for being so vulnerable and stepping outside your comfort zone it makes a difference thanks absolutely i wanted to jump in and say thank you as well i mean as uh first of all first of all i really appreciate you you, you saying that and sharing that you know that that video had some impact uh it means a lot to me but but also uh, I already mentioned it from the very beginning, but I didn't think about uh, involving more people into it. I was just kind of sharing my own process. But when I saw uh, Kate initiating the group and more people joining, and uh, that inspired me. So, and then the everyone's sharing that. Yeah, that meant so much to me as well. So I'm really grateful as well. So thank you. Thank you guys. I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, good. And um, any any other anything else on the top of your mind where you're like, we need to say this, or we 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 we're good to hit the record button. Yeah, yeah I, I'm good. Cool. This was great. This was really, 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 really great. And I I just I can't say it enough. And I think everybody should do it because they'd be just better for it, and they'd make friends. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, actually the, the friends part, uh, I wanted to say something and just left my mind, but uh, that was like, I mentioned in the beginning, I was uh, almost a bit nervous to have this recorded talk, although usually I'm so used to doing the Zoom thing, but today I was, and, and I think part of it was because I got to know you all, and that, that was the funny thing to realize, well, I guess Kate, you saw me fight in the cage, but you know, there's so many people, so we, I don't think we kind of really met. And then that no. applies to, to everyone. Like we, we didn't know. You came on the before. radio station. I ha I have to say, sorry. You came on yeah. the radio station and, and uh, we hugged when you were on air with me. So, cause at, at B98, I'm the DJ radio DJ. Oh, yeah. so cool. So, cool. <laughs> uh, so we did meet. <laughs> yes, we did. Nice. But then, yeah, but then it's, with everyone included, it's, it really started to feel like I'm getting to know you all. And then before we had this 
Zoom chat, it felt like we're, we know each other and we don't know each other, but that, that connection was there. And it's, it's just so special. It's so interesting that we live in these times where this can happen and we made it happen. So it's- Yeah, really I definitely felt that too. The, the talking back and forth and then all of a sudden, like you get to meet someone. It's so strange. I've, it, uh, gals from Missoula. Uh, April, you're from Missoula, right? Is that? Yeah. So, um, there's gals that have come up from SBG Missoula to train with us and I see them in person and it's like, uh, I feel like I already know you, yeah. but now you have to introduce yourself in person. And it's a crazy, this crazy feeling that like you have two separate connections with someone and it's really neat. You know, we've all kind of formed that here. So yeah, I definitely feel that too. It's cool. For me, it's actually, I, I find it a, a nice surprise and happy surprise to know that or not everyone is, in SBG because that's kind of makes it easier because if you're already part of the pack then it's easier to extend that pack but to know that uh, that we're, we come from different backgrounds it's uh, it makes it even more special so it's really cool well good I think I'm good to make this official and just uh, something I wanted to say before we end obviously this the thank yous were said but I wanted to say thank you again it's uh, so special to, to do this and I'm looking forward to see where it's gonna go next uh, and just one more thing in terms of as, as the, the reason I asked about giving feedback for how to tighten the, the group and, and continue doing this because it's still fresh and new and pressure testing is pressure testing until you try it out. You don't know what works and what doesn't work. But then uh, in regards to continuing this process, if you ever have some feedback ideas, uh, you'll notice something like, oh, this worked or, or maybe we should do this. Maybe this could be improved. I already have ideas from our conversation today. Like I'll think a lot about that, like what could change for the better. But if you ever come up with something like that, just please let me know. And yeah, I hope we'll continue to connect and do this. And hopefully even more guys will uh, jump in the, the tight pack or, or the open group. So yeah, it'll be cool.